ready to the countdown. Congratulations! This live broadcast is specially brought to you by Academy YouTuber Malaysia, an initiative by EDD Malaysia and Kelab Guru Malaysia. Please pay attention. The live broadcast will begin shortly. The link to the certificate of attendance will be provided at the end of the session. Please make sure it is filled within the stipulated time. Thank you. Good evening, teachers, parents, and all the wonderful students. Welcome to Pusat Tuition Academy YouTuber. Mabula Pachuma, Salama Ya Pachuma. How are you doing today? I hope all of you are ready for today's lesson. Before we proceed, let us uh, begin our sessions by reciting a prayer according uh, to your own religions. Let me introduce myself. I'm Teacher Tan from College Majukulasi Salamor, the moderator of the day. We at the Pusat Academy YouTuber will provide you with free online classes. Let's take this opportunity to do your revisions. So are you ready? Let me introduce our teacher for today's lesson. We have Teacher Kong from College Majukulasi Perak. We are now live on Teacher Kong's channel. Please support her channel by clicking subscribe now. The topic of to today's lesson is Alkane's part two. And together with us, we also have teacher Vivi Lau from Pusat Tingkatan Enam, SMK Tinggi Klan, who is the control host to ensure the smoothness of our lesson on technical support. And Jegu Shannon uh, from College Matriculasi Pulau Pinan as the observer to ensure the smoothness of our lesson today. So before we begin, I have a few reminders for all of you. First, please pay attention to our lesson. Stop chatting and use the chat sessions wisely. Number two, regarding certificate link, the link will be given to you at the end of the sessions. Please use eDDAT account when you fill in your particulars and make sure to listen to the passcode given by me throughout the lesson and fill in the form within the time limit, which is 30 seconds. Okay, so before starting the class, I shall give you the first two class code, which are A1, A1. So the first two <coughs> class codes are A1. So without further ado, let's welcome Teacher Kong. Teacher Kong. Hi, thank you, Teacher Tang. Okay, thank you, Teacher Shan uh, Sir Shannon and Teacher Vivi Lau. Huh? Okay, so before I start my lesson, right? Okay, so Teacher Tang, can you hear me? Teacher Tang, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you, yes. Teacher Tang. So the, uh, the sound is clear. Mm -hmm. So before I proceed, right, I would like to introduce my chemistry, pre uh, my pre chemistry team, uh, who lead by Chegu Shannon, and then my team may include uh, teacher Vivi Lau, who will have as the control host for today. And then today's uh, moderator of the day, teacher Tang, and uh, observer, Chegu Shannon. Another teammate is Chegu Mawa. So beside uh, Kimia Prayu or pre chemistry team, okay, I also got mathematics team, okay, who lead by teacher E. Next is, ah, physics, uh, this is Perkongsian Radio PDC Biology, Biology team, who lead by Chegu Faiza. And then next is a uh, physics team who lead by Madam Rosmaya. And then this is account and economy team who lead by Madam VZ. And this is my poster for uh, tuition academy, tuition online patrimony. So always remember every sun Sunday, 3.30 p.m. Eh? And then I am Madam Kong Shitli from Parag Matriculation has about 11 years in teaching chemistry. Okay. This is my working place, huh? and please do remember subscribe my channel, like and share this video. Thank you very much. Okay, so our lesson for today is about alkane, which is a saturated hydrocarbon. Okay, what we how how are we going to remember alkane is a saturated hydrocarbon? I always remember like this S saturated hydrocarbon single bond. Okay, single bond. 
meaning that okay for alkene right h is a sp3 for the s is a sp3 carbon which has four single bond okay yeah? so let's continue so today lesson included five part okay the first part right is about the physical properties this is the first part so we are talking about the solubility and the boiling point of alkene and then whether uh is it dissolved in water yes or no okay how about the boiling point we have to explain in terms of what okay and then next is about the uh chemical properties okay just now this is what first part right physical properties so the second part is about chemical properties which included combustion means the hydrocarbon compound react with oxygen so what happened okay and then the next chemical properties is about halogenation it's a free radical substitution reaction it will react with bromine in inert solvent so bromine in inert solvent okay we have to well, madam Paul will cover the mechanism as well okay and then the third part right of today's lesson is about experiment about hydrocarbon so this one right hydrocarbon as we know right included alkane and alkene alkene is carbon carbon double bond okay so how are we going to differentiate these two hydrocarbon and then we, uh, what are the chemical tests okay which chemical test is used to identify between alkane and alkene so are you ready okay yes right let's start our lesson huh? so first about solubility okay we should know right actually alkene is insoluble in water means tak larut dalam air but it soluble in non-polar solvent for example benzene ring carbon tetra chloride okay means ccl4 okay or ch2cl2 dichloromethane okay this also considered as um non-polar solvent chloroform and other hydrocarbon compound but you must know why okay first okay insoluble in water right is due to hydro um alkane alkane cannot form hydro with water okay wow it is soluble in non-polar solvent why because it can form london dispersion forces with molecule of the solvent okay maybe i'll already forget what is hydrogen bond what is hydrogen bond okay this one we have learned in chapter three structure okay the last part four boy four okay hydrogen bond is a special type of dipole dipole attraction between molecules not a covalent bond to uh is um co actually not a covalent bond to hydrogen atom actually is uh is a covalent bond uh. it results from the attractive force between hydrogen atom covalently bonded to a very electronegative atom such as nitrogen oxygen or foreign atom okay so for example so when there is a hydrogen attached with foreign or there is a hydrogen atom attached with oxygen or hydrogen atom attached with nitrogen yeah this one we consider as hydrogen bond so if we check for the hydrocarbon we look at butane ch3 okay c attached with h c attached with h c attached with h c attached with h is there any f foreign oxygen or nitrogen atom the answer is no so meaning that okay hydrocarbon alkane alkane cannot form hydrogen bond with water okay so it is insoluble in water okay for alkene can dissolve in non-polar solvent because it can form london dispersion forces okay still remember when the wall forces when the wall forces okay another type of forces when the wall forces there are two one is dipole dipole interaction okay dipole dipole interaction another one is london dispersion forces so the difference between these two right okay this one is special for polar compound and then this one special for non polar compound and then all polar compound consists of london dispersion forces as well okay so i hope you all can understand huh? okay so that's why um alkane is a non-polar compound so the the type of window forces is london dispersion forces huh? okay so let's try this hot question explain why pentane okay so you should know that pentane with five carbon so this is c5h12 it's soluble in benzene so benzene is a non-polar solvent but insoluble in water so the answer is very simple right okay just now it's in general form this one special okay the question asks about pentane so you should know pentane is alkane so the explanation is the same so you should know pentane 
insoluble in water because it is non-polar compound. So cannot form hydrogen bond with water. However, pentane is soluble in non-polar solvent. Why? Because they can form intermolecular when the wall forces. Okay. Some sometimes right the, the question is quite specific. Must mention London dispersion forces. Okay. So I encourage you to write down um intermolecule intermolecular when the wall forces and then bracket. London dispersion forces. Okay, you write down two times, it's okay. London dispersion forces because London dispersion forces is under when the wall forces. Okay, so nonpolar molecule dissolve in nonpolar solvent and vice versa. Okay, I hope you all can answer this question. Huh? Okay, simple, right? You must mention, okay, some of the students are realistic away. Answer pentane or oh, insoluble in water because it cannot form hydrogen bond. Don't forget, this question, right? There are two parts. Okay, first part is about why it is soluble in benzene. You have to explain. The second part is insoluble in water. That's why this answer right, must include two parts. So the blue one, okay, the blue the blue wording one is explain why insoluble in water. And then the green wording is explain about why it is soluble in non-polar solvent. Eh? So you may, must answer both ways. Mesti an, jawab dua, dua belah. Tak boleh jawab satu je. Jangan jawab insoluble in water sahaja ataupun jangan hanya jawab uh, dissolve in uh, boleh larut dalam nampolar solvent sahaja. So mesti jawab dua dua. Okay. If a if a question is a statement and ask you to explain, right, you have to read the question carefully. Okay. If comparison, you have to answer. You have to com in terms of uh compare weight. Okay. Mesti jawab dalam secara perbandingan. Eh? Okay. Next. Okay. Next is about physical properties of alkene. Okay. Boiling point. Okay. Boiling point. So boiling point, right, you have to be careful. There are three different explanations. Okay, as we know, right, alkane, alkane is non-polar. Okay, so type of process is London dispersion process. Okay, but we have to check, okay, the molecular size. Okay, and then is it the molecular size is the same with the same molecular formula? Or is it a cyclic compound? Because different comparison, right, must have different explanation. So for example, the first one, if molecular wave, okay, we have to talk about molecule, or you have, have to talk about the contact surface area. Okay, this one, right, okay, you have to check. The easiest way, right, you check for the number of carbon. The number of carbon. You check for the number of carbon. Okay, so when the molecular size increase, the surface area be bigger. Okay. Yeah. So you must know when molecular size increase, Okay, so the contact surface area bigger. Automatically, the London dispersion force is stronger. More energy is required to overcome the London dispersion forces. Okay, for isomeric, what means by isomeric? Isomeric, right, meaning that the compound have, it, have, have the same number of molecular, uh, same number of carbon or same molecular size. But, okay, maybe one of the compound is straight change or another one if one branches or another if two branches. Yes. So in this case, we have to know, right? Okay. When the number of branches increase, right? Okay. The molecular shape become more compact and spherical. So at this point, the contact surface area becomes smaller. So when the contact surface area becomes smaller, automatically the London dispersion forces between the molecule become weaker. So less energy is required to separate the molecule from one another. Of course, you can answer another way. So you can answer like, okay, for a straight change compound or for a linear compound, the contact surface area or for the compound is larger. So London dispersion forces between molecule is stronger. So more energy is required. So up to you, uh, you can answer the small, small, smaller size one or bigger size, one. depends on you. Okay, and then cyclic. For cyclic compound, right, higher boiling point, okay? Compared to the corresponding alkene, because you have to know, right, for the surface area of a cyclic alkene is larger. Why? Because there are planar and more symmetry. So for this point, right, okay, the London dispersion forces is stronger. Okay, the London dispersion is stronger, so more energy is required. Okay, so this is the, 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 the explanation for boiling point of alkene in terms of molecular wave, isomeric, or cyclic. So now let's look at the example. Okay, look at the first one. Okay, we look at the first factor, molecular wave. Okay, this is the point that I explained just now, right? 
So look at here. So between these two compounds, okay, I make it A and B, yeah? okay. If for if you if you you if you do want to keep on repeating the CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3, right? You can assume, okay. So you can assume, right? Okay, that this compound is A, another compound is B. But you have to define first. You have to write 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 down clearly first. So here, right, I mentioned this is A, this one is B. Okay, so compare between the compound A and B, which one has higher boiling point? Okay, so you try to apply the concept, okay? Uh, alkane increase with increasing of molecular size. So the easiest way, right, I give you some tips. Check the number of carbon, okay? But, but when you do the explanation, we wouldn't, as, uh, we wouldn't explain in terms of oh, number of carbon based on number of carbon. Yeah, we know number of carbon, okay? But we explain it's due to the molecular size because Number of carbon, it, the relative atomic mass, okay, RMM, you, you always write like this, right, is 12. So when the number of carbon increase, meaning that the mass, right, okay, the molecular mass, right, increase with 12, okay? When extra one carbon, you have to add 12. Two carbon become 24, like, and so on. Uh. So the easiest way to help you to identify, you check for the number of carbon first, okay? Then you notice, right, compound A with four carbon. So one, two, three, four, so which is putin. And then this one, huh, be careful, huh? okay? Because this structure is condensed, okay? Constant and make it a simplified simplify version, CH25. So yeah, there are five carbon, and then plus another two, total is seven carbon. So this is heptane. Okay, yeah? You try to make it, uh, you, you try to ex uh, expand everything, right? You got this, okay, this, there are seven carbon for compound B. Okay, now the question asks about higher boiling point. So the answer is, B, yeah, because B has higher molecular wave or higher mole larger molecular size, okay? So the way to explain is the same, okay? So you must mention which one higher, the answer is heptane, okay? You must do the comparison, uh, higher compared to protein, uh. why? Because the reason is due to boiling point of alkene increase with increasing molecular size. This reason is in general form, okay? But you have to answer the question according to heptane and butane. Okay, so you cannot just give the general form. Ah. Okay, maksudnya, Madam, beritahu lah. So, maksudnya, jawab kena berdasarkan compound yang diberi. Anda boleh bagi penerangan secara umum kat starting point. Yeah, no problem for you. Answer, oh, boiling point of alkene increase with increasing molecular size. After that, next, you have to explain about based on the question. So, you mentioned heptane has bigger molecular size compared to butane. Okay, thus context surface area of okay, bigger than protein of suppose I have to add of heptane. Okay, because I'm doing the comparison. So of heptane, okay, is bigger than protein. Okay, next about the forces. So the London dispersion forces of heptane between molecules is stronger than protein. Okay, and then next about the force energy. So more energy is required to overcome the London dispersion forces for heptane. Okay, you can continue. Compare with, compare with protein. Okay, get it? Yeah, I hope you all can understand for this part. Huh? Okay, this is how we answer the question that related about physical properties of boiling point of alkane. Huh? Okay, next. Okay, this is another higher order taking skill question. Huh? You try to think this one. Okay, I'm using two compound, which is alcohol. Okay, hydroxy compound. So this one is one carbon. 2 carbon, 3 carbon, 4 carbon, meaning that this is butano. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 carbon. This is hexano. Which one has higher boiling point? Okay, for certain students, right, they will think, oh, alcohol, maybe they are at once ready. No, this is hydroxyl, hydroxyl group. So it's hydrogen bond. Okay, but actually, the explanation is exactly the same as the example just now. Why? Okay, for sure, boiling point of heptano is higher compared to butano. Okay, I know most of you can answer this. Okay, but before that, you have to tell me the similarity first. Heptano, butano, the similarity, right? Both have one hydroxyl group, meaning that they can form the same number of hydrogen bond. In this case, we cannot compare in terms of hydrogen bond because it's the same. So now you have to compare in terms of the strength of Van der Waal forces. Okay, you have to compare the strength of Van der Waal forces. The strength of Van der Waal forces is depends on 
the molecular wave or size or molecular size of the Van der Waal forces. So now the explanation is exactly the same as the previous question. But for this question, you have to add in the similarity. This is the similarity. Okay, the similarity of this question, having the same number of hydroxyl group form the same number of hydrogen bond. And then the rest is totally the same. Talk about the uh, when the uh, when the wall forces okay or London dispersion forces okay and then about the molecular size so now okay you just explain heptano has higher mole bigger molecular size compared to butano so contact surface area of heptano is bigger than butano then London dispersion forces of heptano between molecule is stronger than butano so lastly most more energy is required to overcome the London dispersion forces for heptano compared to butano. So you have to be alert. Huh? Sometimes right, the question is simply give you alcohol, okay, hydroxy compound, but the answer is same like just now. Okay, same like just now. Okay, you are using the same explanation like explain the in terms of the boiling point of alkane. Huh? Okay, now look at isomeric. Okay. Um for isomeric, right? Okay, we just now you have to compare it, whether it's strict change or branches. Okay, strict change, hydrocarbon. Okay, straight change hydrocarbon. Okay, straight change alkane. Because we have to point about alkane or branches alkane. Okay, so as we know, if branches, right? Okay, more compact, spherical, contact surface area smaller. So the reverse of straight chain, right? Okay, straight chain, as okay, straight chain compound, right? Which is a uh, larger surface area of contact and then the Van der Waal forces or the London dispersion forces stronger and then more energy is required. So now, what is the example? So this example is like this. Okay, butane and 2-methylpropane. So they are having the same molecular size. Okay, C4H10. But, okay. For 2-methylpropane, there is one branches. Okay, there is one branch, okay, for 2-methylpropane. But butane is a straight change compound. So, which compound has higher boiling point? The answer I think should be no problem for you all already. If you look at the look at the explanation over here, right? Look at the explanation over here. You know already, right? The answer is okay. Protein is higher compared to two methyl propane. Okay, but before you start to explain, right? You have to give the general explanation first. Okay, you try to tell yourself, okay, how how are you going to determine the com uh, which compound has higher boiling point? So you must mention, okay, straight change or linear alkane, bigger surface area of contact, so stronger London dispersion forces, more energy is required. This is in general, okay. Many of students, right, they are able to answer this, but they forgot, okay, point number two and point number three, okay. Maybe, yeah, they can answer, or oh, butane has higher boiling point, and then they straight away give this explanation. Okay, for information, right, if you give the answer butane, okay, you get, get one mark, okay, butane is higher, and then you give this explanation, right, normally no mark is given. Because you have to answer in specific. So you must mention, okay, why butane has higher boiling point compared to 2-methylpropane? You must mention butane is a straight change alkane. Specifically, you cannot answer, okay, al a straight, straight change alkane, okay, has higher boiling point. You must mention butane is a straight change alkane. While 2-methylpropane has one branch, okay. Then butane has larger surface area of contact compared with 2 methyl propane. Okay, compared with 2 methyl propane. Then next, what is the next? Next, you have to answer in terms of the strength of the London dispersion forces. So the stronger the London dispersion forces between molecule for butane compared to 2 methyl propane. Okay, yeah? okay, so butane has. Larger surface area of contact compared to 2 methyl propane, thus stronger London dispersion forces for protein between molecules, and then more energy is required to separate the molecule from one another. Okay, I hope you all can get the skill how to answer this kind of question. Huh? Okay, so this is isomeric alkane. Okay, next cyclic. Okay, so what I, I had explained, right? Cyclic, the key is here. Sure, it's a larger surface area of contact. Why? Lana, more symmetry. Okay, so let's check for this example. Okay, which compound has higher boiling point? You look at compound A with six carbon. Okay, compound B, one, two, three, four, five, six, six carbon as well. Okay, this is a linear or straight change. 
okay and then this one is side click okay okay so for sure you know right the answer is a and then how to explain so you must mention cyclohexane has higher boiling point than hexane why because the contact surface area of cyclohexane is larger compared to corresponding hexane because they are planar and more symmetric so these are the keywords for cy cyclic alkane so then london dispersion forces okay cyclohexane is stronger than hexane and then so more energy is required to overcome the london dispersion forces for cyclohexane compared to hexane here yeah? i hope you're all right okay can answer the question for the physical properties of alkane in terms of boiling point and solubility okay so next we proceed with chemical properties of alkane okay there are two one is compulsion another one is halogenation okay the question will always ask right what type of reaction if the question asks about what type of reaction right okay for this one right you have to alert okay for halogenation most of the student okay you cannot answer if the question asks about what type of reaction right you have to alert huh? okay let's look at the equation one by one huh? So for combustion, right, there are three different situations. Okay, there are three si different situations. Mm, the first one, right, okay, excess oxygen. If excess oxygen, automatically, right, the compound is CO2 and H2O. Okay, if limited oxygen, and then the product, right, is carbon monoxide and water. If very limited oxygen, then the product is carbon and water so for this equation right for this chemical equation combustion between the alkane with oxygen right you must balance it okay try balance it okay i know organic chemistry will not uh, concerned about balancing but for this case you remember you have to balance it uh, okay so when 18 right with oxygen right you form carbon dioxide and water so you try to balance it by yourself so meaning that one mole of 18 red with 7 over 2 mole of oxygen, it will produce 2 mole of carbon dioxide and 3 mole of water. Okay, same for the other two cases. Just remember, re limited oxygen forms CO, carbon monoxide. Very limited oxygen forms carbon. Carbon, okay? And then, next right is about this one. Yeah. Okay, this is halogenation. Why halogenation? Because the alkene react with halogen. So, it can be chlorine or bromine okay mass present of uv okay the condition is under sunlight or present of uv light okay and then due to chlorine in terms of cast right there is there is no inert solvent but bromine yeah for bromine must in dichloromethane this is the solvent okay when this is uh 18 right with bromine in inert solvent under sunlight okay for information right if without sunlight right halogenation of alkene won't happen eh? okay that's why there, there is a uh, the question will ask about what type of reaction if this or this equation is given right and then the question asks you what type of reaction so the type of reaction for this chemical reaction is free radical substitution okay free radical substitution it will form free radical and then right the hydrogen will replace by the chlorine atom and then form haloalkene okay haloalkene okay so later right we are going to learn about the mechanism for free radical substitution reaction eh? okay and then this is another one wow why for, for for equation one and equation two there are there is only one product form but for this equation two okay alkane as well red with bromine in inert solvent in the presence of sunlight or uv light why there are two products okay so I, I am talking about the major product. This is byproduct. This is byproduct. So normally, right, we ignore for the byproduct. Huh? Okay, you have if you know, right, you just write down. Okay, it's okay. But why there are another two hello alkene? This is major product. This is primary. Uh, this is minor product. Okay, this one is depends on the class of free radical. Okay, so you check right. This is secondary hello alkene. Okay, and then this is primary hello alkene form. So normally, right, okay, tertiary is the most stable one. So it will become the major product if tertiary halogene is formed okay tertiary free radical is produced so next is secondary and primary so we just do a simple um revision what is free radical okay this one we learned already in chapter uh, chapter introduction to organic chemistry 
So free radical right, actually is a species with an unpaired electron. Okay, and then form in homolytic clarish. So for example, this is chlorine molecule. So please alert, uh, this is half arrow. Uh, okay, the split the splitting of the electron for the uh, halogen molecule right, is half arrow, must pres in the presence of UV and then form Cl dot Cl dot. So form two chlorine free radical. Okay, same for here, right? Okay, this is the splitting between two ethane. Okay, so split half arrow, split half arrow. Okay, means one ele one electron right is for this uh methyl group. Another electron go for another methyl group in the presence of UV. They are forming two free radicals. Huh? the free radical is represented by a dot. Huh? Okay, so okay, this is the overview for the mechanism of alkene free radical substitution. This is the first mechanism, okay, for matriculation syllabus. This is the first mechanism you are going to learn. Uh. So this is free radical substitution. Okay, in this case, I'm using the third equation that from uh just now right there, are, there are three equations, right? I'm using using the third one. Okay, the third equation, okay, showing that there are major product which is secondary, uh is formed from secondary free radical and then from secondary halal uh halal This is from the primary halal uh primary free radical from the primary halal alkene. Uh. So you must mention this is minor and then this is major. Okay, while showing the mechanism, right, we must, okay, we must use the major product. Must. Okay, kita mesti guna major product untuk meneruskan free radical. Okay. Okay. Um, I think we, we, we shall stop for a while, okay, for advertisement, right? Okay. So we rest a while before for the okay. mechanism free. Okay. Uh, so Berita so baik untuk to... semua. Kini Akademi Youtuber memperkenalkan sistem mata ganjaran kredit AYU untuk dikumpul. Jom ikuti kelas tuition live AYU untuk mengumpul kredit AYU dan berpeluang menyebut hadiah-hadiah yang menarik. Hadiah bernilai lebih rm ringgit disediakan secara percuma untuk pelajar seluruh Malaysia. Apa tunggu lagi? Tebus ganjaran hebat ini sekarang. Layari www.academyyoutuber.com untuk maklumat lanjut. Uh, before we proceed, uh, let me give you the third and the fourth class code. So the third and the fourth class code are uh, 9 and 7. 9 and 7. Okay, so uh, teacher Kong, you may continue with the class. Okay, thank you teacher Tang. Okay, let's start again. Eh? So, okay, for this free radical substitution reaction, right, there are three steps. Okay, first of all, right, we must know there are how many steps. The there are three steps. Step one. Okay, you must remember, you must remember the name of each step. Uh. So this is step one. Step one, right, is change initiation step. Initiate. Initiate means starting, start. Okay, how to start this reaction. So this is change initiation step. It, start, uh, it started from um, bromine molecule. So halogen, uh, okay, sometimes it's chlorine. Okay, sometimes it's bromine. So in this case, bromine molecule. So it will split the bond by using half arrow. Uh. This is the only mechanism, right, that we are going to use with half arrow. So with the presence of UV and then two form two bromine free radical. Okay, the second step is about change propagation step. Okay, propagate next propagate. Okay, keep on repeating. Okay, form free radical. Okay, so the this bromine free radical right. Okay, it will try to okay um at, um something like attack uh, Okay, at, not attack. Okay, is um catch out. Okay, it's interrupt. Okay, another a uh, uh, stable compound. So it will try to is cell stable right by take the free radical from the hydrogen okay it form hbr okay automatically 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 okay this alkyl group means this propene propene compound right okay the propyl the propyl right you form the free radical so the propyl form free radical next the propyl free radical right you try to okay for uh, okay try to interrupt another bromine molecule okay and then from a halo alkene. So you see halo alkene is from and then re regenerate another another one of bromine free radical. 
Okay, so this process keep on repeating, keep on repeating. So this is what happened in change propagation step. So that's why, right, there are two equations for change propagation step. There are two possibilities. One is the bromine, bromine free radical, right? One is the bromine free radical. Okay, okay, we'll interrupt the propane and then form the HBr and then the propyl free radical is formed. Another one is the propyl free radical, right? Okay, go to uh, interrupt, okay, or attack the bromine, okay, bro bromine, uh, bromine molecule, okay, and then form the halo alkene and then form again the bromine free radical. So, when this mechanism will be stopped, okay, when, when, okay, so step three, okay, step three, right, okay, for step three, okay, change termination step. When bromine free radical meet with bromine free radical from bromine molecule or Propyl free radical meet with the bromine free radical from the haloalkene, or the propyl free radical meet with the propyl free radical form. Okay, so this is one, two, three, four. Okay, this is butane form. Okay, one, two, right? Two, two dimethyl butane, isn't it? Okay, to form the two, two dimethyl butane, and then this is the ending of the free radical story. Yeah, so that's why there are three equations. So I always remind my student, right, for step one change initiation step, only one equation. For step two change propagation, there must be two equations. Okay, and then for step three change termination step, there, there must be three equations. It's a must. Uh. Kalau sini dua, you tulis satu salah. Bukan salah, tak dapat maka penuh. Kalau sini tiga, you tulis satu, ataupun tulis dua sahaja, tak dapat maka penuh. So when you perform the free radical substitution mechanism, you must show the name of the step, step one, change initiation step with one equation. Okay, step two, change propagation step with two equations. And then step three, change termination step with three equations. Okay, besides this point, students always forget to show the arrow. And then the arrow must be half arrow. Anak, ana, separo, sahaja. Separo, sahaja. Okay, not full arrow. So the first one, right, okay, splitting. The bone is uh is breaking, right? So that's why the arrow is point out. Okay, with two half arrow point out. For the second step, right, there are three half arrow. So these two splitting, okay, point out. And then when this one point out, right, actually it will meet with another free radical, right? And then join. So for step two, right, okay, actually breaking and forming bond is happened. Bond forming and bond breaking is, is happened. Okay, are happened. For the third one, right, okay, two half arrow, but this one is joining. Okay, two free radical joining, that's why they meet each other. Okay, jadi kena ingat lah, step one, tunjuk kat luar. Point out, kerana ikatan dia akan putus. Step three, kerana dia bertemu untuk mem menghabiskan semua free radical untuk membentukkan ikatan, meaning that tak ada free radical bentuk, jadi point in. Okay, anak panah dia bertemu. Okay, anak panah dia bertemu. But for the second step, right, bone forming, bone breaking is happened. Okay, that's why there are three half arrow. Okay, I hope you all can understand. Huh? Let's try another example. Okay, so uh, this is the important point. I always remember the stability of free radical increase as more alkyl group. Huh? Okay, the stability of free radical increase as more alkyl group. Okay, so for example, this one methyl cation. Okay, and then this one is primary. So primary um, health, uh, free radical is more stable than methyl cation. And then secondary is more stable than primary or methyl. And then tertiary is the most stable one. Huh? Okay. So, I see this question. This is cyclopentane with one methyl group. So, this is methyl cyclopentane. React with bromine in inert solvent in the presence of UV light. So, please show the mechanism. But I want major product only. Okay. So, before that, you can try. Identify the class of carbon. Okay, you can try to identify the class of carbon. Okay, and then, yeah, this is the major product. Why? Because here is here is tertiary, uh, it can form tertiary free radical. So that's why the major product is this one. Is there other possibility? Yes. Okay, but right, all of these right are considered as minor product. Because this one is mm, one, two, three, four. All of these four right, are uh, secondary free radical and then this one right form from primary free radical okay as i say just now right when you perform the mechanism must show the major product only so again step one okay step two okay must with two equations 
Okay, this is another possibility. Don't forget the half arrow. Okay, and then this one is step three. Okay, do you want Madam to show each step with you all together? Yes or no? Okay, because I straight away show you the answer. So if you want me to show with show this together with you, uh, no problem. Huh? So then you want Madam to show you all the step one, step two, step three, one more time. Yes or no? Uh, based on your response. If no need, right, I skip for it. If you want, right, I show it with one, show it one more time. So, pelajar, pelajar, anda dah faham theoretical substitution mechanism? Madam terus tunjuk je. Step one, step two, step three. Kemudian ni jawapan dia. Anda faham ke tak faham? Nak Madam tunjuk bersama-sama dengan anda ke tak payah? Kalau nak Madam boleh tunjuk. Okay. Uh, Darwin, Darwin Rush say uh, no need. Oh, no need. Okay, thank you very need much. For, uh, hmm. Need to wait for another few to... Okay. Okay. Oh, no Darwin problem. say yes. faham, faham. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so as I say just now, right? Okay, if no need, I just brief one more time. This is step one, one equation. Step two, two equation. Okay, and then step three, three equation. Okay, and then you show the half arrow, half arrow. This is bone, bone, bone splitting. Huh? Okay, bone breaking. UV. Huh? Sometimes it is just so excited, they forgot about the UV. You must write down the UV and then form the free radical. Okay, and then step, step, uh, step two. Okay, so the bromine, right? Okay, tend to form, uh, join with the free radical from the halogen. Okay, from HBr. And then now this one more unpaid electron, right, go for the uh, cyclopentane. So this is the free radical for the cy methyl cyclopentane. And then the methyl cyclopentane, okay, try to form bonding with the bromine from the haloalkyl. And then this is the bromine free radical. So this is the ending. Okay, ending bromine free radical with bromine free radical, bromine free radical with the methyl cyclopentyl free radical. And then this is uh, the con the connection between the cyclo pen a uh, methyl cyclo pentyl radical with the methyl cyclo pentyl radical. So this is the product. Okay, yeah. So since you all know it, right? Okay. So next, we try another hot question. Okay. Which of the compounds below give two give free mono bromo alkene when reacted with bromine? In dichromethane in the presence of light. Okay, many students will confuse what means by three mono bromo alkene. Okay, alkene as usual, alkene. So the alkene, right, with one bromo group, mono bromo means one bromo group. Okay, it can form three different mono bromo alkene. Okay, Be between the compound one, two, three. Okay. Among these three compounds, which can form three monobromo alkene when reacted with bromine in dichloromethane. So first of all, right, you try to draw the structure. Okay. So this one is hexane with six carbons, straight change. Okay, one, two, three, four, four carbon. Okay, uh, one, two, three, four, four carbon, two, two dimethylbutane. One, two, three, four, two, three dimethylbutane. So we have to check. Okay. When bromine in inert solvent, okay, react with this alkene, what is the possible or what are the possibility for the alkene to substitute? Okay, what is the possibility for the bromine? Okay, with the bromine atom is substituted into this alkene compound. So let's check. Huh? Okay, for the first one, there are three possibility. Why I circle with red color? Because when the bromine atom added to this carbon one or this carbon six, the product is the same because I can assign like this one, two, three, four, five, six. I also can assign like this one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, when substitute to the carbon one or substituted to the carbon six, it's the same thing. Okay, can you ingat? Jangan bagi dua bentuk you perita. Oh, madam, ini C one bromine got C one, ini bromine got C two. Okay, please don't forget. You can form when you when you assign the position, right? Okay, you can start from one to six or six to one, from left to right or right right to left. Okay, okay, from top to bottom or bottom to 
to talk. Also, no problem. You have to follow the rules and regulation. If there, are, there, there, there is a functional group, you have to give the priority to the functional group. Okay, next is about the substitute one. Okay, give the lowest position. Give the lowest position po is if possible, low, as, low, as low as possible. So there are three possibilities for the first compound, hexane. Mm. For the second one, huh. okay, because, okay, I can start from here. Okay, even though I just saw a side one, two, three, four, right? Actually, I also can assign like this. One, two, three, four. So this is still two, two dimethyl. I also can assign like this. Okay, this is as one, two, three, four. That's why the red circle, meaning that it will produce the same hello alkene. Okay. And then the green one is another possibility, and then the yellow one is another possibility. Okay, for the last one, yeah. Okay, all the red circle meaning that it will form the same halo alkene, and then yellow is another possibility. So let's check the the possible the, the possible mono bromo alkene form for each of the alkene. Yeah, this is the first one. Okay. Okay, I see one. This is. Second one at C2, this one at C3. Okay, and then this one at C1. Okay, and then this one at C1, 2, 3, C3. This one at C4. Okay, and then this one, C1. Okay, this one at C2. So you know, you should know already, right? So which compound can form three mono bromo alkene? Okay. Okay, um, next question I would like to ask. Um, I think I, I choose one. Okay, I choose, okay, compound two. Based on the structure, which one is the major product? Okay, there are three possibilities. One, two, three. Which one is the major product? So, eight, one, two, or three. Based on this compound, uh, compound two, I'm asking compound two. Okay, which one is the major product? You check for the class of halalkin. Actually, you know already. This one is primary. This one is. Okay, you check. Okay, you check for the number of carbon attached. This is secondary. And then this one is primary. So the answer is compound two. Huh? Okay. So, so which of the following compound I think should be no problem because I show you the answer, right? The answer is one and two. Uh. So the answer is one and two. And then the second question I asked, right, based on compound two, okay, which compound between compound one, compound two, compound three, which one is the major product? Okay, the answer is compound two. Uh. Okay, this is two Roman. Uh. So based on compound two Roman, okay, this and then the one, two, three is my answer. And then which one from the major product? So the answer is compound two. Uh. Okay, any question? Do you want to ask me about this question? Okay. If no, right, let's proceed with second part about experiment. Experiment about hydrocarbon. Okay, experiment about hydrocarbon. Eh? So, okay, first, before you enter lab, right, you have to make sure that your appearance, okay, is well prepared. First, okay, you have to wear your lab coat. So this is my student rescue. Uh, he's so excited because he got the chance to enter lab and then he tried to explore everything and want to wear a lab coat. So make sure that you wear proper lab attire with lab coat, fully covered shoes like this. Uh, this is the fully covered shoes. Uh, don't wear slipper or the for girls, right? You don't try to wear the half cover shoes. You must wear the full cover shoes. And then if possible, right, don't wear contact lens, uh, okay? Okay, especially the experiment involve uh Bunsen burner or acid and base, right? Okay, don't try to wear contact lens. Okay, you if you, you if you are short sighted or long sighted, you must wear glasses, huh? Okay, and then when you take the chemical reagent, right? Okay, you have to wear glove and wear goggle. Huh? So this is the protective eyewear safety goggle. Okay, next. Okay, you should know right goggle. Okay, you just try to protect your eyes. Okay, nowadays, right? Everybody have to wear your mask. 
Okay, cover shoes, lab coat, and this is glove. Huh? Okay, since form four and form five, I think maybe uh um form three, form one or form three, form start from form one, or even form four, we will remind you all again. All of these right A are safety equipment, huh? so you must wear it during and uh, conduct an experiment. Huh? Okay, so okay, next right, you have to know right. Okay, you need to transfer solution or measure measure solution, especially for organic chemistry. Always take one meal two mil and so on right but before you start to use all the apparatus right make sure you rinse the apparatus first before before you start to use okay normally right we'll start uh, we clean this we will try to clean okay the apparatus or the glassware right by tap water first after that we distill water okay and then we have to label the for example beaker or test tube because sometimes right, we have to take few few test tube or few beaker okay and then you're not sure okay uh, this one Oh, you take the solution A already. Later you forgot solution B, and then your partner right will go. You try to um take your solution, take the beaker as well, right? Then you mix up. So that's why labeling is very important. Okay, labeling is very important. Okay, I think all oh, your lab right will provide provide the labeling sticker for you. Oh, this is one of the example. Okay, one of the one one of the example sticker. Okay, there are various type of sticker. Huh? So most important, remember to label. Next, while well, you transfer the appropriate volume. Of chemical reagent or solution into a beaker. Okay, meaning that okay, you look at here. This is the reagent bottle. You cannot straight away take the solution. Okay, from the reagent bottle. So you must okay transfer the solution into the beaker first. Then only start to measure how many volume do you want by using measuring measuring cylinder. Okay, so please please please, you have to estimate the volume. Okay, if you want to take ten mil, right? Don't try to take a two hundred mil beaker and then. Make it full, and then you only need 10, 10 mil. Okay, maksudnya jangan terlebih ambil. Kalau nak 10 mil, you agak-agak je lah. Maximum pun 15 mil, kemudian tuang. Okay, jangan pergi ambil. Kalau nak 10 mil, you pergi ambil 200 mil beaker, kemudian tuang penuh. So, nanti akan menjadi pembaziran. Okay, what the ways are if you have to discard the 190 mil of solution. So, please, 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 okay. Estimate the volume that you need. Okay, so you see right here, there is a many glass way, especially for the measure and transfer. This is volumetric flux. Oh, sorry, filter funnel. This is big filter funnel. Okay, this is big filter funnel. Here is the volumetric flux, bigger. You see various type of bigger. Okay, and then measuring cylinder. Okay, next. Ah, okay, while you transfer the solution, please be careful. Sometimes we need the help of dropper. Okay, dropper is very important because you need to um, take the specific amount, the exact amount. Huh? So use dropper to transfer solution into the measuring cylinder, and then make sure the measuring uh make sure make sure the dropper or the measuring cylinder or others glassware okay that you use right is clean. After you have used it, make sure that place in a appropriate container, but not on the bench top ah. Okay, maksudnya nanti sudah ambil drop punya dropper tu jangan letak kat tepi je. Okay, dia akan macam mana? One, senang berlaku kemalangan. Okay, where the accident might happen. Also, you must make sure that you place in a corporate container okay and then uh, this is what i say just now measure only approximate value so that's why there are different size of measuring cylinder okay after you take the solution from the reagent bottle right please cover please cover it okay stopper the reagent bottle you must cover like this because many solution right is quite volatile okay quite volatile and then or easy uh senang menrop juga okay so you must cover it uh, after using, especially for the hydrocarbon, okay, alkene or alkene. Okay, this is test tube, right? Alcohol also, alcohol also is the same. Okay, so this is test tube, right? Okay, make sure that the test tube, okay, when you use the test tube, right, you, there are a few test tubes. So once you label A, B, C, and then put the solution, right, okay, you have to place the test tube in a appropriate container. This is the wooden, wooden rack, this one is the plastic rack, okay, up to you, okay? So it depends on your lab as well. Okay, so this is one of the experiment for matriculation syllabus, uh, reaction of aliphatic and aromatic hydrocarbon. So the learning outcome, right? Okay, you have to, the objective, you have to study the chemical properties of alkane, alkene, and aryl. So you must know the compound, okay? You undergo what type of reaction? What are the conditions or reagent that we need to use? And then what is the, what are the product? Okay, you can show the products, right, by uh, true equation or observation okay if look at the learning outcome to write differentiate an alkene from an alkene and aryl right 
So you have to think what test you are going to use and then how you undergo or conduct the experiment. So in this case, I think the um, important reagent or authorities is black, black sugar paper, very important, and then bromine dichromatine, uh, potassium dichromate, okay, potassium canal 4, uh, and uh, bromine, okay, this is bromine, uh, okay, okay, it's the same. Uh. So there are toluene, aromatic hydrocarbon, cyclohexene, saturated hydrocarbon, and then cyclohexene, the carbon-carbon double bond, unsaturated hydrocarbon. Uh. So these are the procedure. First, right. If you go to the step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4, step 5, and step 6, right? I can explain by using this diagram. You have to prepare 6 test tubes. Okay, this 6 test tube, right? You have to label A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, you have to attach the labeling paper. Huh? So for the A, B, right, with cyclohexane, alkane. C, D, alkene, cyclohexane. And then E, F with toluene. Okay, next, what are you going to do? You are going to wrap the test tube A, C, E with sugar vapor and then B, D, F undergo under sunlight. Okay, so this one is the condition after you add in, after, okay, you must add in, okay, you must wrap the, wrap the, uh, wrap the test tube with sugar vapor first. Uh. Make sure you set up the condition first, set up first, and then only add four to five drops of bromine solution. Okay, you have to set up the step one, step two, step four first. Then only proceed with step 4, add 4 to 5 drop of bromine in dichromatin. Okay, and then leave for around 15 minutes. Okay, let for around 15 minutes and then record the observation. Okay, for part B, right, you have to label GHI. Okay, you have to you have to put in um one mu of again cyclohexene, cyclohexene, and toluene, and then add with chemical 4. Just now, right? Okay, I show you this one. You have to sure the solution, okay? You have to sure the solution, okay? Then only start to record the observation, okay? Sometimes we have to put in to put this big uh this uh test tube into what the buff, okay? To speed up the reaction as well, huh? Okay, after you prepare everything, right? So these are the chemical tests. So make sure the test tube are placed in the dark, okay? This is a ACE in the dark, right? Must wrap with the sugar paper to prevent penetration of the light okay and then the reagent bromine in dichloromethane is added only after the test tube is wrapped as i explained just now then make sure that okay for bdf make sure that need ultraviolet light means sunlight okay so you have to put place them at the appropriate place to allow for the penetration of light okay and then everything you have to start uh, use the because you have to take the time to check the observation. So at least allow them to stand for 15 minutes. So use proper device. For example, this is stopwatch. Okay. Okay. And then for part B, right? Okay, you have to put the test tube into uh water bath. Okay, the range is around 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. And then while you uh, carry out this chemical reaction, right? Okay, you better un uh, inside the film cover because um it more concentrated chemicals. And then do not remove any chemical reagent that inside the film cupboard. Okay, while we put the test tube into the water bath, right? Okay, make sure, okay, you have to take out the stopper. Okay, if not, right, due to the internal pressure later, right, it will pop out. Okay, it is very dangerous when the stopper pop out and then you are not alert about it and you didn't wear goggles. So what happened? Huh, you can think about the consequences. Huh? Okay, this is the table. Okay, you have to construct a table to tabulate the observation, record the observation correctly, record the time as well. Huh? So um, by right, right, I have to write down this one, cyclohexane, cyclohexane, doluene, or benzene. So you have to according to, because this is a uh, matriculation lab manual, right? So I know this is cyclohexane. So you must draw the cyclohexane, write the cyclohexane and then draw the, the structural formula and then cyclohexane and draw the structural formula. If your question is not cyclohexane, it's others alkane, for example, propane, propene. Okay, it's up to your manual. Okay, so now you check the observation. So based on here, right, ACE, what happened? So this is in the dark condition. So while you while you jot down the observation, right, make sure you have to write down the initial color. Initial color is reddish brown color of bromine solution. So you have to mention the solution as well. Uh. Okay, for A, uh, for this one, Okay, I, I make a cross, right, means negative result. So, remain unchanged. And then, for place 
presence of UV, right? All the all the solution, alkene, cyclohexane, cyclohexane, and the toluene, right? All the reddish brown color of bromine solution decolorized. Or you can write down turn to colorless, also acceptable. So that's why for, for the alkane, alkene, and toluene, right, give the positive result. But under sunlight, only alkene, cyclohexene, give the positive result. Okay, alkane and toluene give the negative result. So for the reg negative result, right, you just mentioned the reddish brown color of bromine solution remain unchanged. Okay, for the KMNO4, right, Bayer test. Okay, so the first and the third one, right, give the negative result. The initial color means the original color of KMNO4 is purple color. So the purple color of KMNO4 solution remain unchanged for G and I. For G and I. But for H, yeah, decolorized. So you have to mention the original color, the purple color of KMNO4 solution. What happened? Decolorized. At the same time, right, brown precipitate, okay, is formed. If you check clearly, right, there is a brown precipitate forming. Okay, so this is the way to jot down the result. Huh? You must jot down the initial color, uh, the starting color or the initial color of the compound. And then you must mention the solution. What is the solution they are using? For example, the first part is bromine solution. And then for the second part is the uh, KMNO4 solution. And then what happened for the next? Either it's positive. If positive, right, okay, will turn to colorless. If negative, the solution remain unchanged. So must mention the reddish brown color of bromine solution remain unchanged for the negative result. So after all, right, hmm, we have to remember the safety value while conducting a lab. Okay. So your class, right, might be there are 20 of you, okay? So you have to wait behind the line while queuing before the film cupboard, okay? This experiment might conduct in pair or in individual or group, but no matter how, you have to queue while take the solution, okay? And then while you take the solution, right, make sure only user's hand are allowed, okay? Meaning that, okay, maybe you and your friends, two of you are partner, right? So you plan to uh, queue at the same time. So student A go to take the cyclohexane, cyclohexane and toluene. Okay, please, only one student are allowed, okay, to hold the test tube and then take the solution from the beaker and then use, use but of course, by, by using dropper and then drop, okay, take the solution from the beaker and then transfer into the test tube. So this process, only one student uh, uh, is doing this step. So jangan ada dua orang. Satu begang begang lah, satu pergi ambil lah. No. So only one user for each time, okay, when you try to take the solution from the film cupboard. Okay, after setting everything, after you conduct the experiment, okay, after you jot down the observation, okay, sometimes you write to selfie, right? Okay, you want to selfie with, with, with your uh, work, okay, with all the colorful solution, right? Okay, now is the time to clean. Okay, make sure all the D apparatus is washed by using tap water. At the same time, must detach the labeling paper on the test tube. Of course, of course, after detach, right? Okay, you have to de throw the labeling paper into a uh, dustbin. Okay, but, 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 one more thing, one more thing. Okay, actually, it's this one. Okay, this one is very important. So, before you start to wash all the dirty apparatus, right? Organic solvent or organic waste is not allowed, okay? Throw into sinky sink. You have to discard all the organic waste into the organic waste water. Okay, you have to discard all the organic waste or organic solution right, into the organic waste water. So this one, okay, should give the priority. Yeah? So this one should be come first. Okay, sila buang semua sisa sisa bahan organik ke dalam water yang telah disediakan oleh pembantu magma. Sangat penting. Tak boleh terus buang ke dalam sinky. Yeah? So then only go for wash all the uh, uh, the dirty apparatus are using tap water. Then next, okay, detach the labeling paper and then make sure the labeling paper through into the dustbin. Okay, and then make sure the table, right, all the table is clean, okay. And then the apparatus, you must return to the original place, okay. Follow. Tadi ambil dari mana, letak balik kat mana je. Okay, so these are the cleaning process, ah. And then for the scientific attitude and noble value, right? So every, everybody must be responsible about safety and tolerant with others. And then while you, or you record the data, right? Please be honest. Huh? Okay, if the, the result is not telling what you expect, right? You have to check 
what problem? What is the error? Okay. Yeah? Okay, I think that's all for today. Okay, please stay tuned with us, with Sir Sanon, Teacher Vivila, Teacher Mawa, and Teacher Tang. Okay, every Sunday, 3.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. And don't forget to subscribe my channel and then you can check the video that re relevant with you and then you can like the video and share the video with your friends. Okay, please remember, subscribe, like, and share. Thank you. With God's grace, we are done with today's lesson. We have learned a lot from Teacher Kong on our kings. Congratulations to those uh, who joined our sessions from beginning till the end. And thank you very much for Teacher Kong for such an interesting lesson. Before I provide the certificate link, let me give you the last two plus code, which are 06, which are 0 and 6. Now, please off the live chat button and click subscribe button if you haven't. This is to show your appreciations to Teacher Kong for giving you a free lesson today. Don't forget to also click the bell button so that you won't miss any new videos and live classes from Teacher Kong. If you like today's class, then please click like and share it to your social media friends. Let's share the knowledge you received today. Sharing is caring, right? When you have finished, type down in the ch chat sessions, then I will give you the a certificate link. Once again, I would like uh, to thank Teacher Kong for the interesting lesson. Thank you to Teacher Vivi Lau and Jegu Shannon as well for being uh, with us today. I think that's all from us. See you in wow, the session. Banyaknya hadiah menarik menanti anda. Wah, kini Akademi Youtuber mengambil inisiatif baru di mana memberikan hadiah-hadiah ini secara percuma. Ya, percuma kepada anda semua. Hmm, bagaimana caranya dengan mengikuti kelas tuition online percuma Akademi Youtuber sambil mengutip mata kredit? Anda dapat menukarkannya dengan hadiah-hadiah yang menarik ini. Tunggu apa lagi? Segalanya percuma. Lepaskan peluang tau Dah dapat banyak hadiah menarik Takkan nak lepaskan peluang Layari www.academyyoutuber.com sekarang Untuk maklumat lanjut Dibawakan kepada anda oleh Academy Youtuber